after I'd finished my PhD, I stayed at Stanford for another year, mainly to finish off the loose ends of my research. Then uh, I was going to go back to the States, but decided I actually rather liked Europe for a little while, and I liked skiing. So uh, I looked at various jobs, and one really appealed to me. It was to work for General Electric in an office of three people. One was in charge of solid state, one was in charge of chemistry, and I could cover anything else I liked. After four years there, I had to decide what I did next. Again, I considered both America and uh, both USA and UK. After looking at the various possibilities, I decided it was much more convenient to work in London, but to continue on a part-time basis for General Electric, continuing the same job as I had before, but a very much more part-time-ish. In between, I taught myself that I thought I was more interested in computers than anything else, so that uh, I would actually restrict my activities much more to computers, and in fact, much more to computer networks. And so uh, I got a position in London, in the then Institute of Computer Science, until they closed the place and I joined UCL. In order to be up to date, went and visited various parts of the US which were doing something interesting in networks and computing. One of the people I met during that time was a graduate student called Larry Roberts, who was at that stage, I think, in Lincoln Labs. Another person I met on uh, the roof at UCLA was a graduate student by the name of Vince Cerf. That must have been mid-60s mid sometime or other. I also heard about, uh, from in fact, I think from probably uh, Jerry Estrin at UCLA, that there was some project starting on networks in the US. It was being run by a company called Bolt, Brannick and Newman. And the person who was actually designing that particular network was somebody called Bob Kahn. So I talked to Bob Kahn. Uh, I talked to him quite a few times for three or four years because I was trying to get a project started. He didn't believe for one minute that I'll ever get it started because I had no money uh, from my research grants in Britain. Nobody in Britain had the slightest interest. So he did spend time with me because he's a nice person. Uh, and, but he didn't actually believe it would lead to anything. That would have been probably, in, by that time, probably 1970 or 71. But earlier, the one person who was doing superb research was Donald Davies. He wanted to build a digital network throughout Britain, which followed the digital hierarchy which had been defined for communications over the telephone network. Unfortunately, at that particular time, the British Post Office had a complete monopoly on anything which went uh, outside a single building. They didn't want Donald to do things uh, outside the NPL, so he was never allowed to build his network. In uh, Something like 1970, the ARPANET was starting to work and was starting to work well. If you looked at the Salt Band Treaty, there were lots of small seismic arrays, large ones, there were only three. One was in Alaska and one was in Norway. If you look at the map, you'll see the reason for the Norwegian one was it was obviously very close to uh, the Soviet Union. So DARPA put some money into that particular array getting larger. For obvious reasons, uh, it had a leased line to Washington just for seismic monitoring. Larry Roberts had the bright idea that since the ARPANET was working, and since he wanted computers on the ARPANET with applications, why not take this 
2.4 kilobit line and link it to Washington. Then, uh, when he, since he knew about what was happening in London with Donald Davies, he had another good idea. Uh, the way one went between Washington and uh, that array in Norway was to take a satellite to Gunhilly and then a mixture of landlines and underwater to Norway. Well, if you're going to arrive in uh, London in, in any case, surely it must be straightforward uh, to interrupt the line, have it connect yet another machine, namely something or other, the NPL, and go on to Norway. And so why not propose that the three of them link together, you really would then have proper applications to different networks and really do something very, very interesting. Uh, and so he proposed that. Unfortunately, that was the time that the British were trying to get into the common market. Uh, five years earlier, they'd wanted to get to, to the other European activity which preceded the common market, and General de Gaulle said no. This time, the Heath government wanted to have Britain join the common market. The reason that de Gaulle said no was because we were too closely linked with America and too weakly linked with Europe. Therefore, the Heath decided that he did not wish to accept the offer to link to the US uh, and didn't allow Donald to, to accept the offer. Larry had met me before. He knew me. He, he knew that I knew both Europe, that particular sort of technology, knew the US, and I was the logical person to offer it next. I was interested. I'd heard about it. I would, uh, I would have loved to have working on my research in the university to do it. So I said, I had no money, of course. Uh, I'd love to accept it. So he made me the offer. I then applied to money from our research councils. They thought it uh, was nonsense to do for one particular reason. Uh, for internal political reasons, uh, the ARPANET had been said to be an experiment. The people in Britain doing things didn't deal with experiments. They dealt with services. And so if this thing was an experiment, they would not back a research proposal uh, to, do, to connect into it. They wanted to only to connect into a proper service. But Donald Davies, who did know me, uh, and who was allowed by himself to issue a grant or contract or whatever it was for £5,000, offered me uh, £5,000 to do my research. I knew people uh, very senior in the post office and uh, they knew me and they offered to pay for a line from London, UCL, to Norway uh, for one year. Therefore, I was able to accept the offer and uh, the project started and the rest is history.